Andrew Bragg uh, recently wrote a book called Fit for Service, all about trade. Uh, but unfortunately, he also recently got appointed as Federal Director of the Liberal Party, which therefore means he no longer has any opinions of his own and cannot be here today. Uh, so in his place, we have Sinclair Davidson. So please welcome Sinclair. Well, uh, thank you so much and, uh, um, for, for having me again. It's, it's always very exciting when people turn up and they've heard you once already. Um, I, I just want to abuse my, my position slightly here and just comment on, on a couple of things the previous speakers have said. And can I just say from an entirely personal perspective, I love fiscal drag. I think it's fantastic because I'm already in the top marginal tax bracket. And so there are going to be a whole bunch of my fellow Australians joining me in the top marginal tax bracket sharing the burden that we have of all those welfare bums as they get means tested out of the welfare system. What can possibly go wrong? Um, so we're going to end up more or less with a flat tax at 45%. Um, that's not ideal, but hey, hey, well, it's a flat tax, isn't it? So uh, um, I actually expect over time there will be some movement, uh, perhaps involuntary movement, on, 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 on that particular sp uh, perspective. But um, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, what Chris Berg and I have been up to over the last couple of weeks. Um, mine's out the gutter. Um, so uh, the, the federal government have decided that they want to tax goods coming into Australia um, that have a cost or price of less than $1,000. So that's what we're going to talk about. Now, I imagine that 99% of the people in this room think that Australia has a consumption tax and that consumption in Australia is taxed. Well, that's actually not quite true. We have a sales tax. And it is a net sales tax, and it is um, a value-added net sales tax. And the government knows it's a sales tax because if you look at the budget papers, they list it as being a sales tax. It is a sales tax. But because the idea is to tax consumption, we then bolt on a few strange things to the sales tax. So sales which are to foreigners um, are GST free, generally speaking. If you buy, if you're a foreigner in the country and you buy it, you can in theory get the money back at the airport. Um, it's a lot of people just don't bother in the grand scheme of things. But so exports are GST free, but then the argument goes that we should levy the sales tax onto imports coming into the country to make it into a consumption tax. And so we have the issue whereby we have a practical problem. And the practical problem is, is that we can't police the borders particularly well. And so there's a cost to collecting this money that, as it comes in through the, uh, uh, the border. And the Howard government made a whole bunch of pragmatic decisions and principled decisions. And they decided that more or less um, goods below a certain price level were not going to be taxed as they came in. They would be tax free. Um, and when they brought the GST in in 2000, nobody really thought that much about internet sales and what have you. So um, it worked pretty well in the grand scheme of things. And we have more or less then a consumption tax. Now, the other thing I want to make a, a point I want to make about the consumption tax is that the idea that a tax on sales is a tax on consumption is an assumption by itself. The assumption that the business can pass on the 10% uh, the, the, the tax. Now, whether or not a business can or cannot pass on a tax or any other cost is more or less a function of relative supply and demand curves. And uh, without getting too technical, um, you have to have some sort of market power if you want to pass on a cost. For a lot of small businesses, I imagine they actually absorb the GST themselves um, because they don't have the ability to pass it on. So the notion that we have a consumption tax is actually an assumption, but nobody questions it too much and everybody's quite happy and an old tax is a good tax. And by now, the GST is an old tax and not too much excitement. In 2013, the Liberals in opposition made a whole bunch of very silly promises. And one of them was they were going to have a look at the threshold. They were going to look to applying the GST to goods at less than $1,000 because, after all, it is unfair on small business that their competitors don't have to pay GST. And, of course, if the price differential between foreign goods that you buy on the internet and domestic goods that you buy in a shop was 10% or less, there may be some sort of story here. But in actual fact, uh, my former PhD student, Michaela Novak, 
uh, compared online prices to actual prices in stores, and she found that at the minimum, there's a 40% difference. So when you are buying things online, um, you are getting at least 40% cheaper than buying it in a store. Now, of course, the argument goes, yeah, but they've got costs and what have you, and so on and so forth, and as a consumer, I don't care about your problems. Um, <laughs> really, you should actually uh, be competing better um, and uh, do a much, much better job. Now, as it happens, I do don't buy very much on the internet. I buy 2000 AD comics and I buy stuff from amazon.co.uk where I pay 17% VAT because electronic books in the UK are VATable. Very annoying, doesn't matter. Okay, um, I can't get those things here in Australia. My wife buys so much stuff on the internet that the lady at the post office knows me. So when I walk in and I hand over the slip, she says, oh, hello Sinclair, what's Dominique bought today? And I say, I've got no idea as she hands over the boxes. Okay, but so that's all very well and good. So the argument is that it is not fair on Australian retailers that online sales are GST free. So the government decides that they are going to look into this and do something about it, and a few weeks ago, I mean, they kind of mentioned it a few times now and again, but a few weeks ago, they actually put a bill into the parliament, we've had the second reading uh, speech, and then all of a sudden there was a Senate inquiry. Now, if you buy a good, or uh, yeah, you, let's talk about goods. If you buy a good on the internet at the moment and costs more than $1,000, what happens is it gets held up at customs. Customs send you an invoice for the GST and the customs, so you actually pay more than 10%. I imported a table from India last year, and I worked out I would pay about $40 of, of GST. I ended up paying like $170 um, because they put on customs duty, and then they charge you for charging you. Um, so it, it's, it's, it doesn't matter, but you pay whatever it is. And uh, so they hold it up at customs, and they send you the the bill, you pay the money at the post office and next thing the goods and services arrive. The Productivity Commission had a look at this a couple of years ago and their argument is it doesn't pay to collect any money less than $60 in GST, which means it doesn't pay the government to collect anything less than $600. Okay, this is all very well and good. People are saying, well, we've got a point of principle here. But the problem is, the point of principle is that we've got a budget deficit. So we would be borrowing money to collect tax at a loss if we were to push the, it all down. So this, this doesn't make any real financial sense. Okay, so what happens next is I reckon a whole bunch of very smart honours graduates that the Treasury employers are sitting around over beers on a Friday night thinking, how are we going to solve this problem? How are we going to raise the money? And one of them says, you know what? We won't tax, we won't levy the tax on the seller on the assumption they pass it through to the buyer. We won't send the invoice to the buyer. We will tax the internet platform. So eBay or Amazon Marketplace or these places, they will collect the tax. And they're all backslapping guys, how clever is this, how smart we are, graduates of G8 universities, and, um, and, and what a great idea. Well, as it turned out, I've got to thank you. As it turned out, Chris and I were at the, at the uh, Senate inquiry and we walked in and uh, uh, Senator Jane Hume of Victoria, a liberal, lovely, lovely lady, was absolutely smacking the snot out of the Treasury people when they were trying to explain this to her, how it would work, and I put it to you, She's the very first person to have stress tested this idea. When she said, I want to buy a handbag on the internet, how is this going to work? And this was their birthday cake moment. Um, for those of you who are not from Australia, um, a previous lead leader of the Liberal Party was asked to explain how the GST would apply to a birthday cake. And to be fair, he explained it perfectly correctly. <laughs> but by the time he was finished, the GST proposal was dead, dead, dead. Anyway, so they were sitting around, so what are they doing? They are not actually bringing in a GST that the seller's got to collect the money or the buyer's got to pay at the border. They are taxing a third party. Now, Chris and I actually demonstrated the absurdity of this proposal by taking one of the government's own examples in their own memoranda statement of explaining how the tax would work, and the story is as follows. A guy in Hong Kong buys a $700 artwork from a guy in uh, Vietnam and sends it to his niece here in Australia as a gift. Currently, this is tax-free. Under the proposal, what would happen now is that that $700 gift would be taxed. 
Imagine our friend in Hong Kong, Chinese national in Hong Kong, buys the $700 artwork from the guy in Vietnam over an electronic platform. Let's imagine this electronic platform is now based in the United States. The American company is liable for 10% of the sales price to the Australian government because a guy in Hong Kong bought an artwork from a guy in um, Vietnam. Okay. Where is the connection to Australia? This was their own example. Okay, it's a, we didn't make this up. This was their own example. Now, to take it further, in the bad old days, if you had phoned up and said, hi, I want to buy the artwork, would Telstra have been responsible for collecting the tax? The guy from uh, uh, Myers was saying, oh, we have to have this. But can you imagine if Myers wasn't paying their tax, would the supermarket mall that they are operating in, <laughs> would they be liable for Myers tax? Because that's the same principle. The person who is facilitating the transaction is liable for the tax. Unsurprisingly, companies like eBay and what have you said, we, we just can't afford this. Um, the 10% the tax on the sales is probably more than the transaction cost that they are, or the fee that they are charging for the whole thing. Um, they said, well, 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 we'll probably just geoblock Australia. And of course, everybody jumped up and down. How dare they? Oh, shocking bad. But of course, these people are now up for reputational risk. They're up for legal risk. They could be extradited to Australia and charged with for being uh, tax cheats. When Senator Hume said to the people from the tax office, um, Thank you. When Senator Hume said people from the tax office, how are you going to enforce this? They said, oh, no, no, we we're pretty sure the foreign companies will all comply. And then she said, well, what are you going to do if they don't? She said, well, we will tell their tax authorities that they are not complying with Australian tax law. And I thought, but hang on, under the internet laws of the United States, they're not allowed to do that. The other problem, that, of course, that we have so they would be telling the American authorities that an American company is fully compliant with American law. I said, yeah, okay, nice. Um, the, the other problem is, of course, is let's imagine they do collect the 10% tax and then pass it on to the Australian government. How are they going to convince their own tax authorities that that is not taxable income in their jurisdiction? So how do you get over that double taxation problem? So all up, it's a complete dog's breakfast. Um, a shockingly bad idea um, because a whole bunch of admittedly very smart, honest students sitting around thinking, gee, how are we going to solve this problem? Came up with a brilliant scheme, but nobody has stress tested it. This idea has gone straight from harebrained scheme to second reading debate without anybody saying, how is this actually going to work? And I can certainly tell you when the Mrs. Davidsons and all her cohort suddenly are on the, on the internet, on their tablets at night at bed buying and what have you, and are flying not for sale in Australia, um, certainly there's going to be a lot of angst. Uh, Dominique always shouts at me like it was my idea when these <laughs> sorts of things happen, and I'm sure there's going to be a, a lot of very annoyed wives and very annoyed husbands, and our friends in Canberra have certainly been not as smart. Um, I think even by their own standards, this particular one is, is particularly dumb, but thank you.